Okay, what I wanna to do today is take a two kilogram bucket and put this bucket on the end of a one meter rope and swing this bucket in a vertical circle. And I want this bucket to always be traveling forward at the same four meters per second. So that means when the bucket's here at the bottom, it's moving to the right at four meters per second. As it moves up this way, it's still moving four meters per second all the way around this circle. Now how that happens or how we could make that physically occur, I don't wanna get into that. I just wanna keep this bucket moving along at a constant speed. And what we're gonna go through and do is we're gonna work out the tension in this string at two different points. I wanna look at the tension in the string when the bucket is at its lowest point, And I also wanna look up here when the bucket is at its highest point. Now, because this bucket is moving in a circle, we need to worry about centripetal force. And you'll remember, centripetal force is given to us by the equation. Centripetal force is equal to mass times velocity squared over the radius of revolution. And so what we have here is, well, the numbers laid out for us right here. I've got a mass of two kilograms. We've got a velocity of four meters per second and a radius of one meter. Now, that radius would be from the center of the circle to what I'm gonna say is the center of this, the water or the center of mass here. I don't wanna get into any sort of distribution of mass here. That makes things quite a bit more complicated. Uh, so let's just treat this simply as though we have a point mass on the end of a string. And when we do that, we can see that our centripetal force is equal to the mass, that's two kilograms, times the velocity, that's four meters per second squared, over a radius of one. And we'll find that the centripetal force is equal to 32 newtons. Now it's tempting in this problem to say that the tension in the string is in fact going to be 32 newtons, but that's not true. Remember, centripetal force is the net force acting on an object. And so really we have a net force of 32 newtons. So to better understand what's contributing to this net force of 32 newtons, we need to draw a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on this bucket. First, we have gravity downward. We know the force by gravity downward is equal to mg. Uh, and then of course, we have upward, the tension in the string. So when this bucket is at its lowest point, the tension is pulling straight up and gravity is pulling straight down. Now these two forces do not add up to zero. They create a net force. So we know the net force for the, the bucket when it's at the bottom the net force in the y-axis is going to be the tension minus the force by gravity. And I want you to realize, because this bucket is moving in a circle at a constant speed, this net force is the centripetal force, okay? We can't just say just the tension is the centripetal force or just the force by gravity is the centripetal force. This is sort of an interesting case in which we have two forces combine to be our centripetal force. So we're going to say the sum of all forces in the y-axis is equal to Fc. Well, we'll just put some numbers together here. We know the centripetal force is 32 newtons. That's gonna be equal to the tension in the cable minus the force by gravity. Now remember, the force by gravity is mass times 9.8, assuming this is on Earth. And we find that the tension in the cable works out to be 51.6 newtons. Really what's going on here is the tension in the cable is trying to force the bucket to go in a circle, but it's gravity that's trying to keep that from happening. So tension has to overcome gravity and still provide enough centripetal force for this bucket to move in a circle of a radius one meter. So now let's take a look at what happens when the bucket's at the top. When the bucket is at the top of the circle,
When the bucket is at the top of the circle, gravity is still acting downward on the bucket. So the force by gravity is still downward. What's different when the bucket is at the top of the circle though, is the tension in the string. Because the tension in the string can only be a uh, tension or really, because the tension in the string can only pull on the bucket, that means the tension in the string will always be pulling the bucket towards the center of the circle. So the force by tension in this case is actually downward. And I'm gonna draw that smaller and you'll see why in a moment. So the tension in the string and the force by gravity are both downward here. So this time around, the sum of all forces in the y-axis is going to be the tension and Fg, but we have to worry about our signs. Now, I'm gonna stick with the convention here that the up is positive, and we'll see that simply means we have to be a little bit careful in our calculations here. Uh, but ultimately, if up is positive, that means the tension is a negative value. And Fg, of course, is still negative. But because this is moving in a circle, at this point right here, the centripetal force is downward, not upward before. Uh, before we had said this centripetal force was 32 newtons, that's a positive 32 newtons. We were saying that centripetal force was upward, or since the bucket was at the bottom of the circle, the centripetal or center pointed force was in the upward direction. Now that we're talking about this bucket being at the top of the circle, the centripetal force or center pointed force is downward. So we're actually going to have this time around negative 32 newtons equals negative tension minus two times 9.8. I'm gonna work out the math here and we'll find that the tension in the cable when the bucket is at the top of this arc works out to be 12.4 newtons. So the big issue with this problem is that we always need to realize the centripetal force is not its own force. And the centripetal force is not necessarily always going to be equal to one of the forces. When we deal with a situation like this where we have competing forces, we have to be sensitive to the situation and we can't just start blindly plugging in equations like our equation for centripetal force. We have to be a little bit careful in how we apply this and how this ties back into our, our understanding of things like force, and in this case, net force. And on that note, that's all for now.